as the global population grows, the demand for energy in cities and industries increases. If we have increased uh, consumption of fossil fuels as a result of energy, um, increased energy consumption in those cities, it will make the air quality worse. This increase in need places a significant strain on our environment, particularly as we face the urgent challenge of climate change. Both urban and rural areas require substantial energy to modernize their infrastructure, making the transition to green energy one of the most pressing issues of our time. For Nigeria, we are in a, a situation of energy poverty. Many communities in Nigeria do not have access to modern energy sources. Um, and fossil fuels are found predominantly in an area of the country. Uh, in order for it to be consumed in other parts of the country, to be used for different kinds of energy needs, it has, to be trans it has to be refined, first of all, then it has to be transported, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, the infrastructure is not there. And so you find that in many parts of Nigeria, there's no access to electricity grid, for instance, so no electricity in those places. Uh, you have that there is no access to uh, liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, for cooking. Uh, so predominantly, households in Nigeria use uh, biomass of, uh, or firewood to generate electricity. And so that's a, a serious condition of energy poverty. Uh, the transition to renewable energy can improve access uh, to modern energy sources for many households in Nigeria because uh, renewable energy is far more abundant in places where you don't have access to fossil fuels. So you have the sun uh, and so you can generate electricity on site. To see how sustainable energy works, we travel to Sebore International Farms in northeast Nigeria, an area facing significant power challenges but striving to become a carbon neutral community. Sebore Farms was established in 1982 by uh, retired Vice Admiral Yako Babeme Mango, who are mainly known for dairy processing mango for exports as well as farming extension to the local communities. I took over the company uh, roughly about four years ago and we have made it a point of call to focus on the dairy value chain. Um, we currently have built and commissioned the largest fresh dairy processing plant in the country. Um, its, capable, its capability has 150,000 liters of milk on a daily basis and is completely powered by a renewable energy, which is solar, solar and battery energy storage systems. We also have been integrating local pastoral farmers into the formalized dairy value chain. To date, we have 18,000 farmers within our internet of collection. And we currently collect from Southern Borno, Biu, Chibok, through Adama State and to Taraba State, and the Mambila Patu, Gembu, Gashaka, Guroji, Nisa Maria, and the likes of the other communities. We, we're a strong believer that the livestock and dairy space can unlock true value and wealth for our people in the Northeast and in other more states. And we're hoping that um, Seboe's model can be replicated nationwide to create prosperity for Nigeria. Seboe International Farms, with a storage capacity of about 150,000 liters of milk, relies heavily on renewable energy to produce yogurt, cheese, and other dairy products, processing over 8,000 liters on a daily basis. It's important to note that milk is the most perishable product in Nigeria and probably globally. And for you to be able to create value in milk, you need 24 hour electricity. Uh, because it needs to be cooled to four degrees and maintain that four degrees for um, uh, for it to not go rancid or bad. Now, for you to have that kind of stable electricity, we know that the Nigerian grid cannot provide that. 
and we know that um, fossil fuels, diesel generator carriers cannot provide that as well. So it was a no-brainer that we look into renewable sources of energy and Adamawa State, the northeast, is blessed with solar. And what we did was we then invested in solar and put battery energy storage systems that can give us nighttime power. Doing this kind of energy mix has now been able to guarantee us um, solar uh, energy efficiency, but also reliable energy across our system. So our factory is powered by solar and batteries, as well as all the community um, collection centers that are remotely located. They are also powered by solar and batteries, and that has enabled us to unlock the value in the day value chain in the country. Sebori Farm's commitment to renewable energy is evident in its extensive use of solar panels. This substantial approach not only powers its operations, but also sets a benchmark for other farms and industries in Nigeria. There's a global conversation on the climate change and what is responsible for climate change. I mean, studies have shown that human activities also contribute to climate change. Our actions and inactions contribute to climate change. And most of the things that we do as humans, most of them rely on carbon emitting activities, such as the fossil fuel, right? And yeah. so there's that conversation to say, the world is heating up. We need to transit. We need to move from the usual way of doing things, from the fossil fuel activities to a cleaner energy. And so that is where the conversation of energy transition comes to place, right? We need to move from using our de using the dirty fuel that contributes more to carbon emission to the energy that reduces carbon emission that reduces or have no emission carbon emission at all. So that's why conversations on renewable energy come to play. The impact of Sebori Farm's renewable energy initiative is far-reaching, extending well beyond its immediate operations. This has not only created job opportunities, but has also significantly improved living standards across surrounding communities. Yao Adamu is a dairy farmer who gathers milk from various communities, who now operates a milk collection center. This initiative has been life-changing for Yao, offering an opportunity to improve his living standard and that of his family. The program has empowered communities 
to supply milk to Sebori Farms factory, fostering a sense of collaboration and empowerment. Sebori Farm, I'm planning to sell more. I'm tired of Kudi. Say the mother and the natara Kudi. I'm a susuna. I'm a zona Iba. I'm a zona tara. I'm a samu Inji. There. I'm a fara. I'm a say. I'm a Jona. I'm a I. I'm a had a de Inji. I'm a had a de mother and a saki. I'm a nakara. I'm a Inji view. Kena sel guda view. Kan nika kan surve. Wanda mahaka. Eh, I'm planning to sell more. I want to be a say the mother and Alhamdulillah. That in a fara, I can zoom on the one and Munzo, Munfara, the Sumunai, Munagain, the Akitapia, a Anna Muna da Muke Kewa, Azo Anna Karba, Anna Munakao, Anna Karba, Anna Serua, to the Gabayan, the Tapia, I tapia, Munzo Muma, the Bamuni side of Suba, Harmunzo Munkoya. Na mungu mungu ya shini aka chetu yendu wana santa namba wande daishi aka aiki dani aka gani aiki na aka chetu ba wande daishi za aba wana santa saini si kena si aka dora mi wana naui. This effort is helping several communities build wealth and secure a more stable future. Kaga yendu na kiwa da muna tafia har har aina ne muna kiwa da ama yendu tunde muna zee muna kio. Muda wakasa na muda vi harjeji da Danisa, muzi mukio mudao, amani tunde inju saheli azo, mungi 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 dadi inju ba muzi Danisa, da saheli da 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 Danisa, muna kio kusa kusa, kuma muna samu, nuno nini kuma ana ba mu, ana ba mu abinsi sano, muna ba da sano nini, ana kara kuni ana kara nuno au wajen sano. Muna tazi muna samu nono, muna siar muna samu kudi, kuma muna kudi asikin kudi ndin, kuma muna kara muna bas abinsi sano, kuma ana bamo abinsi sano kada sahel, muna bas sano muna kara ana kara nono asikin sano ndi muna tazi muna samu kudi. To yenzo mu kamunji munga munga dadi kaga mpula ni dagefe muna, anang masanga na rebilite, mune munga munga karba sahel na sebore. Tunde muna jin dadi muna jin dadi sebore sahel angkau mu yenzu angkau mu sola muna darua muna bada sanu mu yenzu ambari tafia jezi ma kaga yenzu imbarua anang yenzu muna muna bada sanu aura agida agida ne muna samu wana sa sola ana buda pampo mu bada sanu ya sarua rua nam baduti ba kome pula ni na gefe gefe na wande sungi karba Sunzo, sun samu, suma, suna so, suma yenzu kan lalle su 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 kuskure basu karba wana muka muri gasu muzi dadi sahel na sebore. This transformative initiative has provided a sustainable livelihood for women in rural communities, taking them off the streets and offering herders a long-term vision and future to hold on to. So then no no mi donja haha ma balo. Min dan ni nak kosa itu sahaja min jam min sorai di antap pamin min gartira jodoh bo min kebi min doy sorai buru min nani belu min jab asyik dia min Allah wad dani min company buru min kosya kosa ngamin min gara min gai latam min kota min doy nani belu min doy jodi min gara min jab asyik dia min ale buru kanda min siya ilisa fika min heba ini dubu isirin deh fandika ngir le buru. Ya ke mi yara ino kosang, to mi yari, bebi aha mi yari, mi mi burti di be da kere, to to mi wala da kere mi sorata, fere mi hora kosang mai hasare, fere bo mi wada, mi dillo andi an tapa mi halawul tapa mi, fere mi hota jemma, to jatta bo mi hebi company do mi aliwaru ki mi hota jemma, mi wara benange mi japa seda mi benange mi hota benange. Eto rayon de keda, muna kai no no akaswa. Baya muna kai nono akasua, osu susa bara subia muba, osu kumas subia, kwa anu kaso bata, baya nda babu, tuka anai, ama ba mune muke kaiba, mata ye mune. Ya zama kama mood ini, kwa ba haka ba, insu kajidadi nkasua mune muke jindadi, 
in basu ji dadin kasuwa ba mu ma bara mu ji dadin kasuwa ba ya jama kama mu din ne amma dai yanzu da muka bar kai nono a kasuwa muna serwa daga company sahel sannan kuma mu ne muke karban nono muna kai a company ana biyan mu muna sire kudi a bank lalle haqiqa wannan rayuwa yana da dadi the empowerment of these communities across the value chain of the dairy industry is a testament to the positive ripple effects of Sebori Farms' efforts. Every geopolitical zone has a comparative advantage in an energy source, and those energy sources must be leveraged to create prosperity for their people. I know we have one centralized grid that can provide power to the entire country, and that's why grid failure is prevalent of recent. However, a blend between traditional energy sources, gas, hydrocarbons, bio, biofuels, and renewable energy sources, which are solar, battery, wind, and water. Having those blend within all these energy sources can be, create immense value at the regional scale, at the geopolitical scale, for people. Energy needs to be focused on industry, not on household. We believe that the current system of energy delivery focuses too heavily on household and households conserve energy, they don't produce a lot of value. So having that change in mindset might be important, looking at the Sebue model to be able to unlock value for the entire country. I see renewable as a core competency that needs to be leveraged to provide energy for the Nigerian people and to be able to allow them any living. There is the challenge with extracting fossil fuels and the fact that uh, during that extraction process there is a very huge risk of uh, spillage, uh, both extraction, lifting, transport of, uh, of fossil fuels create that risk of, of oil spillage which when spilled into the environment it damages the uh, productivity of the soil it poisons the water, it affects ability for communities to grow food. And in Nigeria, we experience uh, quite a lot of uh, oil spills, that spill into uh, the land of communities. They also spill into waterways. They affect uh, uh, the viability of the soil. They affect the viability of fisheries, you know, natural uh, um, you know, sources of protein for people in the Niger Delta. And in fact, as we speak, uh, there's an oil spill that is, you know, continuously ongoing at the moment. Uh, and so that's an aspect uh, of uh, fossil fuel extraction that impacts uh, the environment. But in addition, uh, fossil fuel, the use of fossil fuel for energy in general creates uh, carbon emissions, which, as we know, uh, is the main source of anthropogenic climate change. And this is a global emergency at the moment because we find that the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is resulting in higher average global temperatures. And that is driving us towards uh, uh, a dangerous limit uh, in terms of our uh, environment and atmosphere around the world. And that's something that we need to begin to watch. So you find that there's a lot of global effort uh, to reduce the use of uh, carbon-related uh, energy sources like fossil fuels, uh, but also to reduce fossil um, um, carbon emissions through uh, consumption of fossil fuels. Sebori Farms is a shining example of what can be achieved with the right investment in and the commitment to renewable energy. Its success is a testament to the potential for sustainable energy solutions in Nigeria and beyond. In 2005, 
we the federal government through the um, ECN, that's the Energy Commission of Nigeria, came up with so, so through the ECN in partnership with UNDP, that's United Nations Development Program, came up with the Renewable Energy Master Plan. And that master plan has the short term goals, it has the medium term goals and also the long term goals, right? So from 2005, where it was, so the policy was reviewed in 2000, it was revised in 2011. And then in as much as that policy has quite a lot to help manufacturers, to help the citizens, to help with our renewable energy sector, currently we don't even know where we are in terms of the plan, where we are in, in, in renewable energy, plan, the master plan, we don't know where we are you know what is the roadmap what it is saying so why we have again to respond to your questions we have policies favorable policies good policies however implementation is a major challenge that we have Sebori farms is not just a success story it is a blueprint for the future as nigeria looks to expand its renewable energy initiatives the lessons learned from Sebori international farms will be invaluable one of the challenges that we have, um, especially with climate impacts in Nigeria, uh, is that it has depleted access to natural environmental services that help with the traditional practice of pastoral cattle herding. And so we've lost the entire savanna. Uh, and savanna is tall proteinous grass that our herds of cattle, millions and millions of heads of cattle used to depend on, and now it's gone. Examples like Sebori Farms give you an idea of what it would look like if we begin to think about alternatives uh, of how to do this in a way that not just helps um, communities, but also supports the energy needs of farmers, uh, can provide the kind of conducive environment that uh, cattle herders can, can uh, feel comfortable to um, you know, have their heads stationary. So that's a very good example that we need to look critically at. But we need to look at it from the lens of how it will enfranchise the smallholder uh, cattle headers, as well as make uh, business sense also for uh, farmer communities in the area. So that symbiosis, uh, symbiosis is established. And if we can do that, and if we can give the smallholder farmers and the smallholder cattle herders a stake uh, in that um, enterprise, then of course, this points the way to a brighter and greener future for food production in Nigeria. As the world continues to search for sustainable energy solutions, Sebori Farm stands as a beacon of hope and innovation, proving that with determination and the right resources, a carbon neutral future is within our reach.